Hey, Pastor George, how's it going? Hey, Chris, I'm doing pretty well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. Staying healthy? I'm doing my best. Yeah, how about yourself? Yeah, hanging in there. Yeah, yeah. This is this is our life these days, looking through there screens. You know, inside a little frame. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, it's good to see you, even virtually, um, and catch up a little bit. I'm excited. Uh, for this opportunity we have to talk with you and talk with some uh, young adults and college students. Well, yeah, I planned the sermon series last summer. Uh, we're a University Presbyterian Church and love our university students. You know that, you work with them every day. And uh, that transition is such a huge leap across an abyss from university to the rest of your life. I caught a, a series of articles in the New York Times called Life After College is Weird. And I thought, yeah, it really is weird um, we'd love to talk about that. How does the gospel speak into a big transition like that? And then all of a sudden we have COVID-19, it's weirder than it's ever been for all of us. And yeah. so I thought, you know, what can we learn from our students and young adults as they face and navigate this transition? That's awesome. Well, I'm excited to, to hear from them and connect you with some of uh, our students and young adults. And so if you're ready, I'll invite them into the room. They're in the waiting room right now. Sound uh, let's good? Let's bring them in. Yeah. Let's let's bring them in. All right. Hey, good to see, see you all. You guys. Um, I will let you each introduce yourselves. Maybe your name, uh, if you're in school, where you're going to school. If not, what you're up to right now in life. And uh, maybe just tell us where you're coming from right now. Hello. Um, my name is Nishadi. I'm a junior at UW. I am currently at the Palmer House, my humble abode. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm in California. I just graduated from UW last quarter. So this is my first quarter non-school. So I kind of forgot everyone had to um, take finals. Oh, you want to see? There you go. Here's all my friends I'm talking to. And I am a nanny right now for shelter in place. And so Hi. this is my last week and I'm kind of sad. But um, next week I will be like fully able to engage. But today I will be mostly listening. But nice to meet you guys. Or see you again. Hey, everyone. My name is Miko. I'm a senior at Seattle U. And I'm currently in Las Vegas. Wow. Oh, Las Vegas. Dude, yeah, it's like one of six right now. Nice, <laughs> nice and toasty. Yeah, um, I'm a junior at UW as well. And I'm currently in Seattle, in the Queen Anne area to be specific. Oh, awesome. Sweet, Tori. Well, glad you are here as well. And then, uh, Pastor George, I'll let you introduce yourself and maybe just share a little bit of your hope for this time. Yeah, thanks. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining me. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you better. Um, I'm a husband of uh, Ann Hinman, have three young adult children, uh, two of whom graduated from college just last May. So they are trying to negotiate this transition themselves and sheltering in place with my wife, Ann. Our daughter just moved out uh, just this past week. So we're, we're feeling a little sadness. Also, the joys of empty nest. Well, thanks for, for being here, everybody. Um, our hope is that we'd be able to engage in some conversation around uh, this idea that life after college is weird. And so for some of you, you are in college, some of you are recent graduates, and um, then you got me and George who have been out of college for a little bit. And um, we just want to have a conversation around this idea of what it looks like to, to do life after college. And for anybody else that's watching this, we just want you to know that uh, whether you are in college, in high school, not in school, out of school, wherever you're at, uh, I think we're going to have some good conversation that'll be applicable for anybody who's uh, who's listening in on this. So I just want to get us started with this simple question of um, how do you know when you're an adult? Do y'all feel like adults? And and was there a moment that was like, oh, this is it. I'm an adult now. I feel like I'm an adult when my default setting to failure is grace and humble ownership. Um, you know, my, my natural tendency, the reason why I would consider myself not a, an adult is because I like to point fingers. Um, I like to run away from those mistakes and numb them. Um, and by doing that, I miss out on a lot of um, opportunities to adult. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'll know I'm an adult when that, that default setting is, you know, yeah, just ownership over those mistakes. Well, 
My answer is probably going to be a little less deep than that. Mine is probably um, more when I have had to make hard decisions by myself without uh, the guidance of like my parents in particular um, and being independent, like not just uh, financially, but also like in terms of like forging my own path forward. And so when that becomes more of a reality, I feel like that's when I've started um, feeling more like an adult. To me, it's not so much of a, I'm an adult, but a gradual um, ease into that. Yeah. I'm curious, George, is there, when did you realize you were an adult? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think in, in my generation, it was defined by, you, know, you have a job, uh, you have a place to live, you have a, a stable community of friends uh, and a sense of independence. Um, not sure those metrics are the same these days. Uh, for your generation, a lot of people in the class of 2020, that job is a little bit harder to get. And does that mean you're less of an adult? Uh, marriage is coming later. You know, I married about three years out of school, but I think less. But, but uh, I think you know, a lot of people aren't marrying. So some of those markers seem to be shifting. Yeah, that's so real. I I kind of have a follow-up question for Miko, actually. Miko, do you have, okay, you talked about when you started to think of yourself less and others kind of more. Do, is there like a story that personifies that of like, hey, this is a situation where I used to be like all about me and then like, oh, this happened and I thought about someone else and oh, maybe I'm an adult now. Yeah, the, 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 the examples that come to my mind all revolve around family. And I realized that, you know, me not owning up to anything was a big reason why we weren't experiencing a, a lot of reconciliation or healing. Mm -hmm. And um, Jesus kind of encouraged me to um, put my ego to the side and um, admit that I was wrong and um, confess things. And I was very uncomfortable, but it was also very transformative. That's an intriguing uh, threshold to cross when you start to take responsibility for your failures and uh, your default setting is to grace. And that's really a spiritual um, threshold. It's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm really impressed by that, Miko. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I want to ask another question. I just want, I'm curious, uh, as y'all are recently graduating or about to graduate or you're in college right now, maybe what are some of the fears that you might have or some of the things that come up when you think about life after college? Just given this time, I'm kind of going through a change in like what I thought I wanted to do, which brings just like a lot of uncertainty. And the fact that I was just, I'm um, a biology major, so just like pre-med and I've always had that track. Um, and so, but just given this time, these past couple months, um, God has just kind of put like a stirring in my heart of like what it looks like to go into ministry. And that's just completely different than what I am supposed to, what I thought I was supposed to be going through. Um, and so just like kind of dealing with that fear of uncertainty is the fact that, um, leaning a lot on God and then the fact that like having those conversations with him to really, um, figure out like, is this something that like I want to pursue, um, and just having peace in that. And also just trying to remember, um, I don't need to be making any like rash decisions right now. Um, and this is just like, it's going to take time to figure it out. Um, and just trusting him and just like trusting the process and really listening, um, to like my head and just like listening to like what my heart is calling me to do. Um, and like to take those steps and just saying yes to opportunities, um, that I'll, is essentially just pushing me to whatever I'll be doing in the future. Just peace is a big thing right now. <laughs> Thanks, Nishadi. Can I ask you just a question about that? You mentioned the fear, the change from biology to something else. Is this is this change in your thinking about your future been scary? Is it brought more fear or more? You also mentioned peace. Is it more about experiencing more peace? Yeah, I think um, kind of comes from two places. So. When it comes to just like me figuring it out, I have peace with it because I know I trust God. I think the fear in that is when it comes to when other people um, get involved into like my career change, like for my family, for instance, I still haven't like told them um, just like my thoughts about it. Um, and that's just a conversation that needs to happen. But fear comes from that because 
um, no one is a believer like I am. And so they're not going to understand where my heart is. And so that's the scary part. Um, but again, just like peace just comes into that because at the end of the day, like, um, I'm working for his kingdom and I just know, like, if someone is questioning what I'm doing, I'm doing something for the greater good. And like, I know I'm doing something right. If something who isn't a believer is just like questioning something of what I'm doing. So that's where the fear comes into that. Um, a lot of prayer, definitely, um, for those conversations to come. Thank you. I think the hardest thing is pretty similar to what you're saying in that in finding like the right path for me to go down. And I think it really goes down to what I hold dear and value the most in my life. Cause I feel like, um, cause I grew up in Singapore and um, things like achievement and like success have always been things that I've aspired towards just because the culture um, really encourages that like good grades, like getting a good job and stuff like that. Um, and that, also has an underlying um, thread of like wanting to um, seek the approval of other people as well as a want to control the direction of my own life. It's like a funny thing in Singapore where we'll be like, oh, it's like the typical path for you to um, yeah, graduate um, from a good college and I get a good job and then get married. And it's just all seems to be like a path that's like laid out. Um, and I feel like a lot of people, at least I do, I imagine situations where, oh, I have that and I have that life that I envision, but I recognize that that is a way that I personally try to control my future by putting those perceptions of the future in my mind. And so in order to really go down the path that God wants me to go down, I We've really been trying to pray and like think about okay, like what talents do I have specifically that he wants to grow out, that he wants me to use? What opportunities has he given me in my life, and what path is he putting me on? Um, yeah, and I I really believe that like it it's clear when we pray and sit with it, and like even the process of sitting with it has been very valuable for me to just reflect upon like what I value most in my life, and so I think moving forward, it's really about continually putting him in the center and him at like to be like the first thing that I want to pursue. And that would everything else like control and like seeking other people's approval while they are good to a certain extent. Um, yeah. That they would be second place um, as compared to him. One thing that I have been talking about with my friends um, who are also graduating seniors or already graduated last quarter or the quarter before is a lot of us have this fear of lack of structure after college. I think mm. in college and when you're kind of in that age thing in between high school and whatever comes after that, whether you're in school or not, there are like support systems and there is the Palmer house and there are people who are paid like third to hang out with you and they ask you about their lives and they want to be invested. And I think a lot of us are feeling that like, okay, so what's next? Like, how do we stay community? Like, how do we stay in community at this pace or at this level? And I think a lot of us have gotten comfortable in the fact that community finds us rather than we need to go find mm -hmm. community. And we aren't yeah. necessarily equipped to do it in a way that's healthy for us and healthy for other people. Um, and I think with that, there's that like trepidation to, okay, I could move to a new city and find new people. And I think, I think the, the in and our community, um, is so like just next level that a lot of people are afraid to leave um, because they're like, okay, I, I experienced this in college. I experienced this in my twenties. What's next. And so without really getting clear steps on, okay, here's, you could go, or I'm going here, come with me kind of a thing. I think a lot of people are kind of feeling that limbo, like, okay, am I going to be pursued by a church community? Are there people who are still for me? Is there a place I can go and feel safe? Um, and so with that, I think we've been talking about that a lot. And so I don't have the answer to that, but <laughs> a couple people's minds, including my own. So, and I'm going to work for the end next year. So I'm not even going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear it, Sonia. Thank you for jumping in. Yeah, I'd say the, the thing that does make me nervous and the thing that I am really fearful about, you know, post-college is um, what my parents will think of me taking big risks. You know, I've always been kind of a daredevil um and my parents they're, they're the first gen and so they 
kind of, you know, when they came to America, they want to really play it safe and, you know, pursue a, a safe career and just stay in that for their whole lives, which is what they've done. Um, and so just kind of that upbringing um, subconsciously um, was rooted in my mind. Um, but that um, just isn't how I roll. Um, you know, I, I love taking big risks. You know, the, this Friday, actually, I'm going to be running a 100 mile ultra marathon in the Vegas heat. And it's like nobody, nobody understands, like nobody in my family understands like the extreme risks <laughs> I like to take. But like, that's just where I thrive. And I totally get down with, you know, like starting businesses, and like doing things that are very, you know, untraditional and, you know, Asian culture. Um, but it, it does deep down um, concern me and make me nervous just because, you know, they have, my parents have really sacrificed you know a lot to, uh, you know, give me the life that I have now. And I, I don't want to, you know, disappoint them. And I really want to, um, you know, make them proud of me. And I, I really do value um, what they, what they think. Um, but it's just tough because, you know, my mom the other day, she was like, hey, Mika, have you thought about what you're going to do? Like after uh, college, you know, my friend, um, she's a bank teller and she like knows a lot of, of accountants. And in my mind, I was like, dude, that sounds like death by paper cuts. I would never <laughs> be able to do that. I mean, I love, my uncle is an accountant. I love him, but I just, I, I don't like playing it safe. Um, so yeah. <laughs> What looks like an ideal job to you from where you sit today, Miko? CEO, Miko Ministries. <laughs> <laughs> starting your own business and starting at the top, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you brought up um, COVID-19, and I'm just curious, how has that been affecting you all as you are students and adults and figuring out life right now? Um, how's that playing out for you in the, the climate that we're in right now with COVID-19? I think there's two parts, one negative and one positive. The negative being that, yes, the job climate doesn't look particularly welcoming right now. Also, just the fact that there's a lot of suffering happening. Um, and not personally, I'm very, I'm blessed to say, but uh, like people around me and like people that know people around me. And so there's just a lot of... Um, that going around and I really believe that we all have to be for, be there for each other in this time and so that can really bring you to like a low place if you let it um, but the positive is that I know that God is here with us and he is holding us in this and while this is a really terrible time for a lot of people it's also an opportunity for people to um, stand up to that and really uh, live into what we're being called to do in this time and I guess a positive for me is also um, a lot of time for reflection and uh, not having to do things like traveling places and like going between places and being super busy being stuck in the same place has really given me a chance to like um, sit down and think and so that's been a good thing that's come out of this time for me even with all the uncertainty. I'd say that the two things that happened in COVID that have really um, taking me kind of aback was I'm at home. I am with my family nonstop, um, for it's been like over 60 day now, days now. And with that being in this space of post college, but not yet professional, um, I am having to figure out with my family what it looks like for me to have an adult relationship with them in a way that works for them and in a way that works for me. Um, and so we're engaging in all sorts of interesting conversations, um, of, oh, I like the norms we had when I lived here in high school are totally different now. Um, our communication is different and we're having to engage in those conversations rather than run away from them. Um, and so that has been a really interesting. And I've been talking to a few of my friends who are also living at home about, oh, like, what do you do with your family or how does it work when this happens? And so that's been interesting and very unexpected because I did not anticipate living at home Um post-college for more than, you know, a week at Christmas and a week at Thanksgiving. Um, yeah. And so that has been really interesting. And the second thing that's kind of shifted in my life, apart from moving away from my friends, is I have not made a new friend huh. in two months. Really? I have not made a new relationship. I have not met no anyone new. My circle, my sphere of influence has stayed exactly the same. 
And so in an outreach ministry where we're constantly looking to bring people in, we have kept, what we're doing right now is maintaining. We're not reaching further out. Mm -hmm. And so that has totally changed everything I've thought about the Life College team, about outreach ministry, um, because we're used to like, oh, invite someone new, invite them in. And right now people aren't really doing that. You're kind of just maintaining until we're allowed to um, engage with new people. So those are, I would say, the two biggest things that have changed in COVID. I guess it's lucky in your case that you hadn't moved to another city where community wasn't pursuing you. And, you know, imagine yourself sort of locked down without that, without that stable group of community that you had before. It'd be really hard to make new connections, wouldn't it? Well, Pastor George, I'm just curious if you have any questions or thoughts or responses to any of this Um we well, have just, on... Yeah, thanks, Chris. I mean, just a reaction. I'm very impressed. Uh, I love the way there's a spiritual maturity that you all are bringing to this that I didn't have when I was going through that transition myself. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I was new to Jesus. And uh, I wish I could say I had the kind of maturity that you guys have. But what's impressing me is that you're all mentioning your parents. Um you're negotiating a new relationship with your parents and didn't expect to necessarily be at home. Um, there's some challenges that come with, with this and being near your parents. Also some opportunities I'm hearing. Uh, Miko, uh, you know, you're, you're working on your relationships with family and uh, sounds like you're being really intentional about that. Nishadi, uh, I remember going through my own uh, call to ministry and my parents didn't understand that at all. Some of the hardest conversations I can remember were those conversations that were about me kind of having adult relationships with my parents in a new way, but also about them trying to understand this crazy, wacky path that, that uh, I was, you know, I felt like I was called to. They wouldn't have understood that. But um, yeah, just uh, interesting that you're with your family in one way or another um, and working with their expectations for you. Yeah. It is so true. I feel like that is such a big piece of of any transition in life or anytime you're stepping into a new phase uh, is expectations. And they're going to be there whether you are aware of them or not. And so I think it's just really cool even hearing you guys articulate some of those expectations or hopes, uh, whether you have been aware of them heading into this next phase of life or not. Uh, they're there and it's cool hearing y'all talk about it. And, and if I were to try to summarize, you could just tell me if this rings a bell or not, if I'm missing it. But it seems like in every case, the question is, am I about to do what I want to do and feel is important to do? Or am I about to do what somebody else thinks I should do? Am I doing what I'm doing because it's me? Or am I doing what I'm doing because someone else thinks this is what I should be doing? It seems like you're all wrestling with that one way or another. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah I think you hit it right on the head. Wild stuff. I love it. Where does Jesus meet you in that? Where do you meet Jesus in that? As you kind of hold your own expectations and others' expectations simultaneously, uh, what does it look like for y'all to seek the Lord in the midst of that? I think for me right now, I'm just kind of, and I always have been just like wrestling with like trust. And just because I just always, I pick and choose the places where I want God to be present. And then I take control of the places that I don't want him to be in. Um, And that goes with just like my future and like school. Um, And so I'm like, just like slowly learning what it looks like to just like really give him all the control, just like all the trust in that. Um, he has in his hands like and it's already set out and laid out it's just like what I do next and like it's like um in ways that like what am I trying to say um yeah I don't know I'm just I'm I'm really I'm wrestling with trust and I'm just like it's scary but at the same time it's like because also it's me but also I have to think about like the other people too. And like, I have to think about like my family and like what they have set out for me. And um, I feel like I'm disappointing them. And like, also I'm a people pleaser. So it's like, if something, if only one person is upset and I feel like I have to like just drop everything. Um, And so that's just kind of like where I am, am right now. But then also in the fact of like, 
Prayer has been really huge. I always feel like I don't know how to pray. I always struggle with praying sometimes and like I can't articulate what I'm going through or I can't like really articulate what I'm feeling and that's super frustrating. But um, just the constant reminder of like, there are times where I literally just go to God, I'm like, God, hands up, like, I don't know. Simply the words like, I do not know. But um, allowing him to move through that space and then just like knowing like, he knows like what my heart needs right now. Um, and like, I don't need to articulate it because he already knows. Uh, and just like trusting that too. And I think where trust come from is just like how, the fact that like where I am today compared to like where I looked at myself like a year ago, I didn't know that I was going to be here. And I've moved through so much and gone through a lot. And like, it just like, it kind of just like reiterates like just like how great he is. Mm. Um, and how much he is moving and like just working, even though it seems like it's like silent. Um, but then just looking at all that change that's happened literally in like a year, like not even a year, it's like nine months, um, is absolutely incredible. So trust is a really big thing. Um, and prayer. So. Super helpful, Ashadi. Thank you. The way that I've really been trying to seek out Jesus in all this has been through, um, rest and stillness. Um, I have a, a very strained relationship with rest. You know, I, I remember one time at my tennis academy, I got uh, punished with some sprints because I took a Monday off after getting back from national tournament on Sunday. And so um, what the Lord has really been showing me in this, um, you know, season of life of balancing my own expectations versus the expectations of others is that when I pursue rest and I pursue stillness, um, all of those fears and doubts and anxieties kind of just fade away um, as I just rest in God's presence um, and rest in His goodness. I think that it's come with a realization that um, the right path that I think I have to take might not be the right path that um, I expect or I, that I want. How do I say this? Mm. Like that mm. um, what where God wants me to go may not be where I think I should go necessarily or other people. And so like I even hesitate to trust my myself sometimes because I'm like, oh, do I want to do this for reasons that would bring me close to God reasons that would bring me closer to what he wants me to do or do I want it for another reason that mm. maybe isn't um, such a good motivator um, and so the way that I've been really wrestling with that is through prayer just like Nishadi and yeah just um, really speaking to him and recognizing that this is about a relationship with him it is a an ongoing conversation and I can't expect him to just give me the answers flat out like oh do this. I mean, sometimes I believe that that is clear for people, but I also feel that, yeah, this process of wrestling through it is very important. And um, it's helping me trust that where I am and where I'm going, I will be placed for a reason and he will provide for me in those places. And so to just um, continue to trust in that and not think so far ahead um, all the time, because I feel like I'm particularly prone to that. Um, and yeah, just to echo what Nishadi said as well, she said that so much had changed in her life over the past nine months. I want to echo that as well. I didn't even know Jesus one year ago, which is wow. absolutely wow. insane. Um, yeah. seeing how much has happened in that time. I know that like by trusting him, um, I know like everything will be okay. Like whether it's my perception of okay or not, it will be okay. Right, this whole time is hey, the, the like the your worth in this time is based on how much you produce and how much you can get done and your to do list. And Jesus is wiping all of that away, and He's saying, "Come sit with me. Come sit. I have something to teach you. All you need to do is ask. What like ask me to show up? Ask me to teach you something. Ask me to show you. And it's not about how many Zoom calls you're on a week. It's not about how many students you're connecting with. It's about how are you inviting Jesus into the mundane things of COVID, right? And the things that we have been doing eight, nine weeks over and over and over again. Um, but how can we meet Jesus in that? Because when we invite him into the small things, I'm learning 
there is no way he doesn't overflow into the big moments, right? Um, if I am able to meet with him every morning and then I have a call to a student later on in that day, in the morning I pray about that student, Jesus is automatically going to overflow into that conversation. And it's okay that I am not at the same level of production I was three months ago. And that's okay. And this is a season for me that I am tucked away and learning and resting so that I can be ready for what's coming next. And I'm excited about what's coming next. And I think the hardest thing for me is that I know what's coming next in my life. A lot of students and a lot of my friends aren't in that space. They don't know. They don't have jobs. They don't know what they're going to be living at the end of the summer. A lot of people's leases end at the end of the summer and they're like, I get a job where where I go home, right? And so I can look forward and say, okay, Jesus is going to meet me now and he's going to meet me in the fill in the blank. And I think a lot of people are feeling that, okay, God, you're here with me now, but where are you taking me? And what am I equipped to do? Thank you all. I mean, it's one of my favorite things about my job is that I get to hang out with y'all all the time. And I just feel like I get to learn a lot from all of you. So it's fantastic. Uh, we have gone a little longer than I think we anticipated, which is awesome. Pastor George, I just want to give you the opportunity to give like a parting shot or question or anything that you might want to say uh, before you well, need to take off. Well, I just want to thank you guys for your time and your your wisdom, your insight. I look forward to more conversation. My my wrist is, is uh, hurting from trying to capture as much as I possibly could in writing, but we're fortunately we're recording and I'll be able to, to go back. Just again, I want to thank you. Uh, this is a difficult time. Uh, I, it really does seem like life after college is weird in general. Um, but in this time, like weird as weird can get. And you guys are on the front lines. Uh, you, you guys are navigating. And I think we're going to learn a lot from you as you trust Jesus. It seems like that's something you're all wrestling with. How do I trust that he has a plan? that my life is in the right place, that the next step will be a meaningful one. Um, that's that's something we all need to learn. Uh, so I'm glad to, to, to be uh, learning from you. Thanks for sharing with us.